How do we understand and communicate with hostility? Evading this issue is not the solution, since we all must, at some point, talk to or work with individuals who are incensed. Those interactions can be challenging, so I'd like to discuss a method which may assist in accomplishing this goal. Caution. Individuals express and experience aggression in many forms. Therefore, our reactions will vary. I'm here to have a conversation with you regarding a method which will allow us to communicate with individuals in a situation of aggression. Active listening is a style that is utilized in areas of rapport building and counseling. Active listening involves the listener to fully concentrate, understand, respond, and then remember what is being said. Listening skills establish flow rather than closed-mindedness. Active listening is opposite from any other listening techniques, such as empathetic and reflective listening. Reflective listening is when the listener repeats what the speaker just mentioned to confirm that both parties understand. Now, empathetic listening is about giving others a passage for one's emotions. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to accept new perspectives on troubling topics that cause emotional suffering? Guess what? We already have these capabilities. The man upstairs gave us this gift, so let's share it with the world. Active listening is strategically vital, serving as an integral part of any effective and successful leader. With the current social unrest in the United States, it is evident politicians, their advisors, policymakers, and representatives of law enforcement are lacking these skills. These groups instead become defensive and reactive, which instigate even more public outcry with damages and violence in our streets. Today we'll highlight the prospect of active listening associated with empathy, open-mindedness, and avoidance of interruptions. Dealing with an adverse crowd in today's world, one should bear in mind that something went wrong initially, and it is still falling short of any positive results. As a retired hostage go to eater, I utilized active listening skills for more than 23 years. The FBI, in my professional and academic opinion, are the architects of modern active listening skills. They use it in hostage negotiations, interviewing methods, and crisis situations. After I retired from law enforcement, I found myself using active listening skills in all aspects of my life. And if used consistently, you'll just see promising results. Therefore, I'm here today to offer an alternative approach from a person who has a different idea on how to take adverse situation and turn it into a raft of rationality. What I have to say today is continuous in its complexity, but what it suggests is vital. People, we live in a world which consists of unstable social and political settings. We need strong leadership, and strong leadership starts with the ability to notice core details and issues challenges, and opportunities. This is possible when leaders have a good grasp of active listening skills. Don't get me wrong. What I have to say is not just about listening, but rather listening with a perspective of recognizing the problem and then knowing what others would say in their approach to resolve this issue. Active listening is the discrete fashion which serves to improve infrastructures with a person or a group. The goal is to introduce different methods of communication through open-ended questions, rapport building, dialogue, research, and observation, all for the sake of reaching a behavioral change through encouragement and a harmonious atmosphere of cohesiveness and understanding. Active listening skills also serve to reduce the emotional tensions and outbursts when a leader encourages more interaction and interactive adjustments. 
it enables us to collect enough data and additional information to set the record straight. A variety of goals can be attained with active listening skills. However, the main task is to focus on how rather than what a person says. For example, the tone of your voice, demeanor, the use of pauses and tracking of emotions during communication are essential goals within the DNA of active listening. As a listener, this is time to introduce a more meaningful and focused method in communications. One should use paraphrasing to describe the overall meaning of your conversation in your own words. This allows the person who is speaking to you know that you are listening. Therefore, it is practical to keep repeating some of the main words said by another person. This ensures that the perspective of the conversation are being covered. The current situation in the United States after the tragic death of George Floyd instigated much physical and verbal aggression in our streets, making America full of social disorder and public unrest. The recent misconducts by small, and I said small percent of our country's law enforcement officials has caused an emotional surge by the citizens they swore to protect. <sighs> More's the pity. Subsequent to the death of George Floyd, America's streets became filled with so many aggrieved and intense citizens. I choose to say the word aggrieved rather than angry because it is comfortable to call someone angry when you don't understand their frustration. However, the word aggrieved represents adjectives such as wrong, offended, or injured. So for the remainder of this talk, I will use the word aggrieved. At this moment, it had become clear to the rest of the world that something is wrong with this country's interdisciplinary approaches and now calls for justice become more willingly. The country became divided. Citizens started adhering to the laws of the street where the fittest survive. And on the other side of this pandemonium, some groups united to protect their homes, businesses, and communities from looters and rioters surfing on the wave of public outcry. The thing is, these individuals who follow the ideal of establishing justice through civil unrest don't even try to realize or evaluate the root cause of the whole problem. In the negotiations between the government, law enforcement, and its citizens, the missing link relates to the inability or direct disregard of active listening skills. Politicians, law enforcement, public figures seem to follow the wrong meaning of active listening. These groups instead to incorporate their judgments, counterattacks, pieces of advice and values into a conversation. And in return, they receive an intense reaction from the public. However, it is more important to focus on the feelings, values and demands of the opposite parties. They need someone to listen to them, someone influential and responsible. In this respect, empathy is essential to identify and justify someone's feelings pertaining to real life circumstances. And this can only be possible when leaders are receptive to the different views from the ones who suffer from a fundamental sociopolitical problem which has existed far longer than I have been on this earth. First, Know how to calm oneself before trying to enter a negotiation with the aggrieved. I say to the leaders of this so-called free country, you must understand that these are individuals who are hurting, whose tempers are no longer a significant starting point of their behavioral reactions. And when this happens, this could lead to individuals feeling they have nothing to lose. Therefore, the unsurpassed methods in a troubling situation is to start by active, empathetic listening, avoiding defensive arguments, and establishing goals to persuade the contrasting parties. Listening to the voices of diverse people during times of ongoing racial unrest is a matter of great responsibility. It is critical to recognize the significance of other people's views and what they're saying, perceiving them equal 
and straight to the point regarding the overall situation and its issues. Letting people voice their concerns in emotional surges is absolutely imperative during the process of active listening. It gives grounds to building trust and furthering relationships as the conflicting parties start to make sure their voices matter. Mutual trust is mandatory when shedding light on issues from someone else's perspective, even if talking about the collective idea of what Black Lives Matter as a movement embodies. It's all about recognizing one's indignation, which does not require complexity, just active listening. This is the exact outlook that police and politicians will take when dealing with an aggrieved group. It's highly unlikely that chaotic transformation and upfront hostility will lead to a positive change. And it is naive to think this way or to keep menacing the protesters and other involved individuals. For the sake of rapport building and mutual cohesiveness, communicating in a setting of confrontation should be non-threatening and without imposing your own judgment. I'm sorry, but why is it that people of power and influence tend to anticipate feeling their own significance by sharing their own messages and about this problem and then suggesting their own solutions as well? Read my lips. No one wants to hear your solutions regarding the problems of others right now. I say it is time for the people in the streets to be heard. How is it conceivable that the ones responsible for our country's social disarray and the ones able to resolve it can't even hear the cries from the people they are supposed to protect and serve? The main task is to listen actively, making certain you understand, then orchestrate all the pieces together to develop an optimistic depiction of the issue. This approach is better served when we disregard our desires to want to squabble with a hostile crowd. Strategies of communication require significant variations. Therefore, we must reroute these strategies onto a path of decision-making, further interaction, and collaborate with the community. Personally, Knowing the situation from the inside out by having a direct relation to the law enforcement profession as a retired police officer, more importantly, as a black man, I would suggest looking for more advisors from different fields to introduce an interdisciplinary and cross-cultural approach to the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, everything matters in this context but the primary role should go to active listening, full of empathy, and acceptance of diversity. Active listening techniques are designed to allow an unreceptive group transform into a consistent community, open to negotiations and rational conclusions. Aggrieved individuals in this so-called free country want more understanding, and it starts with the state of being understood, with no interruptions or judgments in your response. Everybody has a voice and everyone has something to say. Let us show appreciation and value to their voices. Our streets cry of independent values, ideas of equity, serenity, and cooperation. Hence, there is a critical point of suspending one's judgment and turning to active listening which is open within the scope of effective, for effective and rational leaders. Our countries agree want to be understood. So by indicating your purpose and to halt judgment and recognize the aggrieved individuals without becoming angered yourself, we as a society can help diffuse a hostile situation. Active listening is comprised of a cognizant effort from the listener to reserve one's desire and to understand the need of an aggrieved community. So in summary, as I observe our country's 
leaders and policymakers attempt to negotiate in a society facing uncertainty and civil unrest, I will illustrate my skepticism by citing from the late Minister Malcolm X. Oh, I say and I say it again, we have been had, we have been took, we have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok. This is what they do. Ladies and gentlemen, we must not allow those sentiments to resurface again. I'm Crux Conception, and I thank you for the privilege of your time.